Throughout its history, Egypt went through periods of glory and power, but it also faced difficulties during the terrible droughts that brought hunger and suffering. The wealthiness of Egypt also attracted the attention of many powerful realms. Many enemies wanted to invade the Egyptian territories. In 525 BC, the Persians invaded Egypt, commanded by King Cambyses II. The Persians had already defeated the Babylonian Empire, and nothing seemed to satisfy their ambitions for new territories. The Persian domination of Egypt lasted until 332 BC and was overthrown by a young and ambitious conqueror, Alexander the Great. Alexander seemed unstoppable. He conquered city after city, winning battles even under unfavorable conditions for his army. He dominated many Persian territories and, after defeating King Darius III in a great battle, besieged the city of Tyre in Phoenicia. After a great siege, the city was conquered. Alexander destroyed it as a punishment for non-surrender. Alexander and his army headed for Egypt. The Persian ruler who commanded Egypt had the good sense to surrender without offering much resistance. Alexander was received by the Egyptian people as a liberator. He was proclaimed as the son of the god Amon, receiving many treasures. Alexander spent a short time in Egypt, but during his stay, he founded the city of Alexandria, one of the most important cities of the ancient world. It would become the capital of Egypt in the following thousand years. With Egypt's dominion secured, Alexander set out for Mesopotamia to attack the heart of the Persian Empire. After the death of Alexander the Great, the Egyptian government was controlled by the Macedonian general Ptolemy I. He declared himself pharaoh of Egypt and began the Ptolemaic dynasty. The influence of Greek culture brought by Macedonians influenced much of Egyptian life, but this happened in a natural way. The Macedonian rulers respected and encouraged the traditional customs of Egypt. Over the years, pharaohs of Macedonian origin were represented as Egyptians. Marriages between Greeks and Egyptians became common, and gods of both cultures were merged. One example is the deity that received the name of Amon Zeus. The military equipment of the Egyptians almost completely assumed the Greek style. Even commercial boats and war galleys began to be built in the Greek style, which was more advanced and robust. All the male pharaohs of this period of Egyptian history used the name Ptolemy to honor the founder of the Ptolemaic dynasty. The Ptolemaic established a great trade route, mainly by sea, and this made Egypt prosper again. During the Ptolemaic dynasty, the famous Alexandria Library was also built, which had thousands of papyruses and clay tablets with the most diverse registers and studies in areas of mathematics, philosophy, and architecture. The Ptolemaic kingdom went into decline with Ptolemy. He was a detestable king, lazy in political affairs, easily corruptible, and cruel. He had relatives killed, including his brother, father, and mother. At the end of the Ptolemaic kingdom, Egypt was plunged into political chaos. Many Ptolemaic pharaohs were cruel tyrants. Murders within the family were common. While Egypt was going through another turbulent period, a new threat from the Mediterranean Sea was aimed at reaching the land of the pharaohs. Rome had already conquered vast territories in much of the European continent and wanted to further expand its domains. The Roman Senate decided to intervene in the political situation of the Egyptians because Rome depended a lot on grains exported from Egypt. If another civil war occurred, Rome would run out of food for its legions. The famous Cleopatra was not the first with this name. She was part of the Ptolemaic dynasty, direct descendant of Ptolemy I. In her childhood, she studied with Greek teachers and was educated in religious cults of different cultures. It was said that Cleopatra could speak eight languages. Cleopatra became queen at 18. Despite sharing power with Ptolemy XIII, her younger brother, she seems to have dealt with the kingdom's problems alone. At the beginning of her reign, she had serious problems. Egypt was facing another drought and period of hunger. As time went by, Cleopatra's younger brother began to confront his sister. He had the support of his childhood tutors and other nobles who preferred a male ruler. Cleopatra married Ptolemy XIII, but it was a merely symbolic marriage, for they never had a good relationship, nor did they consummate the union. 
Ptolemy XIII eventually removed Cleopatra from her position and began to reign alone. The Egyptian population revolted, and of course, Rome was watching everything, fearing another civil war in Egypt. In 48 BC, Julius Caesar arrived in Egypt with his troops, staying in the palace of Alexandria. Cleopatra, knowing the fame of the Roman general, did not waste time and sought to establish an alliance with him. Cleopatra was successful in her negotiations with Julius Caesar. The two became allies and lovers. Now they needed to overthrow the usurper brother and recover the Egyptian lathe. Caesar called troops to besiege Alexandria. This was followed by a series of clashes between the Romans and Ptolemy XIII's troops. Finally, a great battle took place on the west bank of the Nile River. Ptolemy XIII had about 20,000 men, and Julius Caesar had a smaller number of troops. But Caesar advanced with his army, which received Greek reinforcements. Both military forces advanced by land, while the boats traveled along the Nile River. It was a battle that took place on land and water. Caesar and Ptolemy followed the movements of the troops as they sailed on their boats. The battle on land was brutal. Ptolemy's troops were on higher ground and forced the Romans to retreat. Many Roman soldiers fled and swam towards the boat. During the confusion, Caesar's galley capsized with the weight of the men who climbed aboard. Julius Caesar had to swim to the riverbank to survive. At the height of this confusion, the Greeks arrived to support Caesar. The Romans managed to regroup their troops and counterattack with the help of the Greek allies. They conquered the Egyptian camp, where Ptolemy's troops were. With this turnaround, Ptolemy's troops fled to the Egyptian boats. Ptolemy's boat also capsized. Ptolemy was not as lucky as Caesar. He drowned because of his heavy armor, which dragged him to the bottom of the Nile. After the battle, Cleopatra returned to the throne. Most of the conspirators were arrested or executed. In 44 BC, Julius Caesar was murdered in the Senate of Rome. Cleopatra sought a new alliance with General Mark Antony. Mark Antony and Cleopatra were married in Egypt, but Rome never considered this marriage official, since Mark Antony was already married to a Roman. Mark Antony offered Cleopatra vast territories that belonged to Rome. In his will, he affirmed his desire to be buried in Alexandria. The Roman Senate rebelled and gave General Octavian permission to go to war against Mark Antony and Cleopatra. To face the situation, Cleopatra joined her army to that of Mark Antony. It was the largest maritime fleet ever seen in history. They left for Greece, where they were intercepted by the fleet of Roman ships. The maritime battle was disastrous for Mark Antony and Cleopatra. Their naval fleet was destroyed by the Romans. Luckily, both managed to escape alive. A year later, Octavian besieged Alexandria and defeated the city's defenses without much difficulty, destroying the plans and ambitions of Mark Antony and Cleopatra. Cleopatra was an enormously powerful woman. She managed to keep Egypt united and, throughout her life, protected the territory from being swallowed by Rome. Cleopatra's life and personality were so remarkable that they continue to be an inspiration to this day. In our channel, we have a mini-series that tells in detail the incredible story of this great woman. Take a look at the videos. After millennia of existence, memorable battles, and political intrigues, Pharaonic Egypt lost its independence and became a province under Roman rule. The legacy of the ancient Egyptians is extremely valuable to human history, and of course, Egypt will continue to be remembered as the cradle of one of the greatest civilizations ever.